Thank you in advance for taking the time to view our content. If you desire and find this content helpful, please like, subscribe, and share. Hello everyone, this is session four of the Lead Generation Workshop live. And what we're going to do tonight is we're going to bring everything together that we've been talking about over the last three weeks. And this is actually week four. We're going to bring all of this into one concept tonight to help you to do something concretely to generate leads. And that's really the point of everything that we have been doing. And I'm calling this method something that actually was not a term that I coined. It was one that I first heard from Dr. Ben Atkins and Barb Ling. And they call it the buyer infiltration method. And the buyer infiltration method is a way that everyone can use in order to get leads while you create products that will actually bring buyer leads. Now again, the very best way for you to be able to generate internet marketing leads in particular is to launch a product. Right? That's always going to be the best way. And it doesn't matter how few, and I want to make sure that I say that over and over again, that it is the most efficient way to find buyers that will want to buy from you. Right, so, so again, the, the, the very best way is going to be to launch, but then b between launches, what you want to do is you want to be generating leads. You want to be putting people into your autoresponder, and there is a way to do this, and this is something that, again, anybody can do. This does not take extensive technical skills in order to do, and in fact, we've been talking about, or we talked about in week one, that you should be building relationships, and the reason you're going to build those relationships is going to be this week, the buyer infiltration method. So all of that that you hopefully have been doing over the last few weeks in terms of building relationships with potential affiliates, this is the reason that you want to do it, what we're going to talk about, to, talk about tonight. Basically, in the buyer infiltration method, you're going to do a giveaway to the buyers of a certain product. It's not going to be your product is going to be somebody else's. It's going to be a vendor's product. So we have talked about the fact that you can actually find out what the launch calendar is going to be going into the future. Is everyone familiar with MunchEye.com? MunchEye.com. Is everybody familiar with that? If you are familiar with MunchEye.com, please put the number three in the question box. If you're not, put the number four. Okay, so everybody here at least is familiar. And that's where you're going to find out what the launch calendar is going to be going forward probably the next two to three months. And so you want to be able to look at that calendar and see what can you offer and who do you know. Right? So what can you offer and who do you know? Who can you actually go to and add value to their product? At the same time, do you know that person? Are they part of your social media connection? Have you had, uh, you know, did you buy a product from them? Um, some kind of way have you established some kind of, uh, some kind of personal uh, connection. So you're going to be giving away, doing a giveaway to, uh, to the buyers of a certain product. Now I want, to, I want to mention this as an aside. You can also do this. Now it doesn't work as well as the buyer infiltration method, but you can do it. And we, you probably have seen people do it all the time. You can go to a vendor and you can do a training and a webinar for them. So the vendor doesn't know something that they want somebody to train them on. And so you can actually go in and be their trainer. You can come in and you can teach their people about something that you know that not everybody does and that the, the, the vendor themselves doesn't know. So again, at the end of that, at the end of that training, all you're going to do is you're going to say, if you want to find out more, or I have a free giveaway at this web address. We've all experienced that. So does everybody understand that? Um, just doing a training. Look for training opportunities when you can. You'd be surprised what you know that other people do not. You'd be surprised if you can teach something that a particular product creator doesn't know, that if you can kind of come in and you can get on a webinar and you can teach their people without looking to sell anything, that's going to be of benefit to the person, to the product creator. Um, and, and again, are you, really, are you really going to be doing is speaking to your expertise. Right? So you can do a training and a webinar for another marketer. But, 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 but the buyer infiltration method, and that's BIM, is so powerful because you're only going to be approaching buyers. When you actually get your, 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 your page 
onto the download page of a vendor, what you've done is you've segmented yourself, you've segmented your offer to people who are already information product buyers. Now we're going to have to go through a, a uh, I'd say a decision making process that we're going to talk about here, but just understand in general that you're trying to get your download page onto somebody else's download page so that they can pick up your maybe so they can pick up something that you have in exchange for their name and email address in fact you want to exchange their best email for the information you're going to be giving does that make sense so if you get that please put the number 4 in the question box if you get it that makes sense to you all right now All of this assumes that you already have a relationship with the marketer, so that when you ask them, they're likely to say yes. Some kind of relationship. It can be a customer relationship. It can be a social media relationship. It can be a freelancer relationship. You need to have some kind of relationship. And you'd be surprised how many times that you can actually do the job of a freelancer for somebody because it's going to put you in touch with someone that you could not have gotten in touch with otherwise. Again, all of internet marketing is leveraging relationships. And you can leverage a relationship when you are in a freelance capacity that other people can't do. In other words, there are always going to be people who are going to be trying to do, ask people to do a JV. And I get approached like that all the time. I'm, and I, I, I've approached other people. Right? Do you want to you want to work together on this? And people are nice, but they basically aren't looking to work with anybody. But when you are actually a freelancer, I'm not saying that if you're you're not a freelancer, you be, need to become one. What I am saying is that by doing contract work, you have an open line and a relationship to some people that I, as an information product creator, will never get. Does that make sense? So if you get that, please put the number five in the question box. Right? If, if, you, if you are a freelancer, if you are a contract uh, person, if you are somebody who does, uh, you, do, you, you, you do work for certain people, you have a relationship that's incredibly special and you have their direct line. You can actually email somebody, you're going to e get an email back. Now again, that doesn't mean that you want to email them every single day about your new product, but it does mean that generally, because of the relationship you already have, that by the time you actually start making contact with them, they're going to contact you back or they're going to take your call or they're going to answer your email or they're going to answer your Skype or they're going to answer your Facebook message. Let's talk about the buyer infiltration method download page advertisement. You, you generally are going to need something like a 250 by 250 or a 350 by 350 pixel um, what I call an advertisement. I'm going to actually show you one here, and it's one that uh, I've done in Photoshop. I'm going to just kind of open this up for you. Let's close some of this out. Oh, I closed Photoshop. That's not what I wanted to do. So we're going to open up Photoshop, and I, I want to show you one that has been done. And th th these, these little ads don't have to be complicated. And in some ways, they don't really even have to be pretty. They need to have, and I'll spell this out to you, they need to be clear on what the benefit is, and you have to pick the right place to put them. And we're going to talk about picking the right place to put them. But <clears throat> I want to talk just about the ad first, because this is actually going to go on your partner's page. Right, this is actually going to go on your partner's page. So let's open up. I'm going to open up. Uh, all right, and I'm going to size this up so you can see it. You may have even seen this before on a partner's page. And basically, all we're really doing here is we are giving something away, but we have to get them in order to click something so that they can go to our page and we can actually sell them on opting into our list. But we haven't done that yet. So what we have to do is we have to attract them. And we need to have something that is so very basic that it actually tells people exactly why, why they need to click, and exactly what they're going to get when they actually get there. Right now, I think that this is, I think that ever, after everything, it's going to be 250 by 250. Actually, this is 500 by 500. I would size this down to 350 when it actually goes on somebody's page. 
right? And all I'm really doing is I am, and I'm going to take this layer out. I'm going to put in an image, a 3D image of something that I want them to see. But basically, I have a call to action. I have a headline. And I have a what's in it for them. Does that make sense? Does everybody see that? So if you get that, please put the number six in the question box. This is, this is the advertisement that goes on the download page of your partner. Does not have to be, and it shouldn't be fancy, it should be direct. Right? It should be direct. Any questions about that? So are there any, any questions about that? Okay, so the ad should have a call to action, it should have an offer, and it should have a 3D graphic, and that's what I had there. So you should have the ability to create your own 3D graphic. I mean, I guess you could outsource this. I would not. Um, I would get something that would help you to be able to make 3D graphics. You can get Photoshop. You can get eCover Authority. You can get Usign. Get something that will help you to create 3D graphics quickly so that you can add them to your lead generation pages. And all we've done right now is we've started by creating the ad in Photoshop. Again, you're going to use the graphics creation software that you use, right, that you use. You don't have to use the one that I use, just use the one you use. All right, any questions? Okay. Okay, I, I said here that you can either design it in Photoshop or uh, you can, uh, or, or you can have a design, right? You can do either one. What you should do when you are doing this, you've got to make it as easy for the product creator as possible. It's got to be easy for them. So when you actually approach the product creator, you must have your image already there. You should have your page already there so that all they have to do is to put your image on their page and connect your landing page. So you have to make this easy. You can't leave anything to chance or anything to guess. You give them everything they need to put an image on their page, everything that they need to size it down if they need to, everything they need in order to make the process easy. Now, one of the things I do want to share with you is that regardless of what, uh, regardless of what graphics creation software that you use, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to click Save As. Where I like to send people the PSD file in addition to the PNG file. Some people are going to have a staff that can actually size it down or to actually add to it. I want them to have this information and I want them to be able to add to the layers that they need to. So I give them everything that they need in order to make it easy. Now, not everybody's going to want to work with Photoshop or even these layers. I'm going to give them the PNG file also. But does everybody understand what I mean by giving the vendor everything they need to make it easy? So if you get that, put the number seven in the question box. If you get that, make it easy for them. Give them the PDF, I mean the PSD. Give them the PNG file. Make the ad easy to use and the landing page easy to use. This is important, and I, I can speak for myself. I've done this on both sides of the table. The closer you get to the launch date, the less likely you're going to be to get that download page space. And that's really why you need to be looking at MunchEye and talking to people early because you need to have this done. Do not wait until, I'd say, a week before the launch or even, a, even a two or three days before the launch and then give this to the person expecting this to be on their download page. It may or may not be. They, they have a designer doing their download page, they've got to contact that person, they've got to get them to put it on the page, they've got to inspect it, they've got to decide whether or not it looks right, where it goes. Look, try to do this as far ahead of time as you can. Create the graphic, get it to the person, make sure they get it onto their sales page, and follow up. Right? The closer you get to the launch date, though, the less likely it's going to happen. And you, you, what, what, during a launch, a person that is getting ready to put a product on the marketplace, whether it's JVZoo or Warrior Plus, they are inundated with details. Right? They have massive numbers of details that they're trying to they're, they're trying to put together. If you are going to if you are going to uh, uh, get 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 onto their download page to create leads, then you need to be talking to them early. 
right now. Now, th there are going to be some cases where you, you might be in a space with a bunch of other marketers. I would almost say that you want to be wary of those situations. And I'm not saying that you w won't take the space, you won't take the download space, but if, if, you, if you're going to be one of 10 partners, then you, the, the likelihood's going to be that they're going to get all the 10 of these freebies and they're going to get rid of them just as fast. You don't want to be one of a number. You want to try to be one of an exclusive kind. So again, you, you, th this is again where research comes in. But you have to find a good vendor, and maybe they're not going to have anybody else on their download page. But you're going to be there because you talked to them early, and you try to approach this so that you're not going to be one of three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten other people who are going to be on the download page. Choose your spots carefully. So in other words, make sure that you are going to be on a spot that's really going to give you the kind of, I'd say, the, the kind of visitor and the kind of lead that will ultimately lead to people buying your stuff. And I'm going to talk about what that means here right now. But again, you, you don't have to do it with, I'd say, everyone. You want to you wanna put together a list and you want to put it together carefully. It can be a big list and it probably should be because you're going to get turned down more often than not. But pick, put the people on that list carefully. Right? Make sure, and I'll tell you what to make sure here uh, when we get to this. I want to talk a little bit about choosing a partner and an offer. Choosing a partner and an offer. And this, is, this is kind of an important part of this. Um, think about the person that you've asked, or think about the person that you're thinking about asking to put your image on their download page. Will, will the people that opt in that bought that product, will they be interested in what you have? Right? And that's the, that's the math you sort of have to do. That's the thinking you have to do. So in other words, the, the, you're trying to get on the download page of a person who is going to be talking about Facebook ads. Yes, maybe they talked about landing pages, but your product is on landing pages. Is that going to be of interest to people on, who, who, got an, to, who got a Facebook ads course right, in the long run? Maybe not. Right? You've got to really start thinking about, well, yes, I can get an opt-in, but is it going to be the kind of opt-in that people are going to want to read my emails and they are going to want to get what I have? Right? Does that make sense? So if you get that, please put the number eight in the question box if you understand what I mean. It's important, so I want to make sure you get it. Okay? Don't be vague in your ad on um, the point of this advertisement is to get them to click, right? So that's why it doesn't have to be, and it shouldn't be, I'm going to go ahead and put that layer back on there. It doesn't have to be super sexy. All it is, it just needs to have exactly what I want them to do. Click here to download, right? If you want a free, right, 10 videos, 10 MP3s and presentation slides, if you want that, then click here to download. Very simple call to action. There are some other aspects I am going to talk about, but again, you don't want to try to get cute with this. Do it in a way that's going to be direct and tell people exactly what you want. Here's what I want to talk to you about, and this is what I think if, if, there's a, if I see a disconnect between what I see marketers who do this and marketers who are successful with it, is that you have to match the intent of the underlying product with your bonus offer. So in other words, there's a product, and that product is going to be teaching people, let's say, how to create an opt-in form. What is your bonus going to be? Is your bonus going to help them to do that more? Is your bonus going to help them to enjoy that process? Is your bonus going to help them to be more effective doing that? That's the way you want to think about it because everybody's going to make that decision in a split second. They're going to see your ad. They're going to say, well, is this going to be something that I'm just going to end up on somebody's list? They're going to start blasting me. Do I really want this? But if you make it all about the reason that they're there on the download page in the first place, then what you're doing is you're increasing the likelihood that somebody's going to say, yep, I want that too. 
The reason I'm here is for Facebook ads. And now look, here is another something that's going to help me to do Facebook ads. Maybe there's, maybe there's some templates. Maybe there are some headlines. But you get the point. You have to try to match the underlying offer with your bonus offer. Does that make sense? If you get that, put the number nine in the question box. You get that. Match the underlying product with your offer. Now, that bonus offer, right now we've gone from matching the bonus to the underlying product. Now the bonus offer ultimately has to match the intent of what you ultimately sell. Right? So in other words, if you, let's say that, okay, I am a, I'm a PLR seller, right? I, I, I could probably get on somebody's download page and I could pick up some leads from, let's say, uh, uh, Facebook pixels and Facebook ads. But does that match what I do? Are those people who opt into my list, are they going to want to hear from me, talk about PLR? And if they're not going to want to hear from that, then really the, the point of getting this lead is not going to really help me. It's not going to help the people who are going to be on the list. It's certainly not going to help me. And so what you and I have to do is you've got to do these two matchings. In other words, you've got to match the intent of the underlying offer with the bonus offer. Then the bonus offer has to match the intent of what you, right, your business model and what you're selling. If you get that, put a, a number one in the question box. If you get that, bonus offer has to match the intent of what you are selling. Do not get leads for the sake of leads. So all leads are not created equal. A lead that's going to be predisposed to what you're going to be selling, that's a lead. And I'm not, listen, when I say predisposed, I'm not saying it's got to be exact. I'm not saying that, I'm just saying that if person is, a person is going to get weight loss stuff and you're going to be talking to them about, I don't know, um, you're going to be talking to them about, about carpentry or something else like that, don't, don't, don't match, match things up as close as you can get them. A lead is not a lead. Is not a lead. A lead is a lead if it's qualified. A lead is one if you've matched the underlying product with your bonus offer. A lead is one if you've matched the, uh, the, the bonus of what you personally sell. At the same time, right, even though I want you, that, that even though you need to be careful about, about what offers you pick and what people you pick, don't hesitate in asking. Right? Don't hesitate in asking. And you might feel a little uncomfortable asking somebody for that spot. Trust me on this, nobody really takes that personally. So you're not ruining your relationship. If some, but I mean, just as long as you're willing to hear no, right? If somebody really is not really wanting to use your product at this point in time, you really cannot take it personally. And if you go in knowing that the person is probably not going to, uh, they're not going to take it personally, you came and asked, don't take it personally if they say no. Okay, so uh, you're, you're, you're just asking them if you can have a spot in the download page for their next launch. You need to be specific about what you have to offer. Right? You should have gone to Munch Eye. You should have done your research. I, I, don't, I don't want you to do, I, I'd say, surface research. In other words, you see a product on Munch Eye. It's about Facebook. And then so you're going to put a Facebook offer on the page. That's not specific enough. It's not, uh, I'd say, uh, there's no evidence that you match the intent of the underlying offer, and there's no, uh, there's, there's no evidence you match the intent of what you're selling. So those two things have to be in place in order for you to do um, the buyer infiltration method here. And once again, don't be shy in uh, asking for a spot on the download page. Now... I always say one of the things you want to try to do is you want to be the try to want be the one to go first, right? You be the one to go first. What do I mean by that? I mean then try to be the one that promotes the person you're going to ask first. Try to be the person that does a video testimonial for them first. Try to be the one so that when you start when you get ready to ask something, you now again. I mean this is almost going to please do not take this the way that it sounds. It's going to sound a little sinister, but. <laughs> um, you 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 want to you want that person to be in your debt. You don't want to be in theirs, right? You don't want them to put you on their download page and then be in their debt. The law of reciprocity could work in your favor if you're the one that goes first. 
if you can do a promotion for somebody, if you can, if you can do, uh, I, I'd say if you can put some things um, in order for someone, do them. Right? You want to put them in your debt. You don't want to be in theirs for asking. So you be the one to go first. Right? You go first in providing value, some kind of value. You go first. Does that make sense? So if you get that, please put the number two in the question box. You go first. Okay, now you're going to need a sales page. Right? It doesn't have to be a fancy sales page. Um, I, I'm going I'm to go ahead and step out there. This is my opinion. A sales video on a page where you're just trying to get somebody to take some action and opt in, that could be overkill. When, you come, when, when people come to that page, you, you, don't, you don't want them having to sit down and watch an autoplay video. So I'm going to say if, if you really feel strongly that you've got to have a video on this sales page, then at very least test it. People are going to make a decision pretty much in a split second as to whether or not they're going to go on to opt in to get what you have on that page. And if you're going to autoplay a video, what you're doing is, personally, you're slowing down the process. A sales video, when you're trying to get someone to buy, you're trying to get them to move their way down the page. It actually works the opposite in lead generation because if I come to your page and you autoplay a video, and I, my first inclination is going to be to go away. Right? It's not going to be to kind of continue to listen. It's going to be to continue to go away. So again, a, a, a sales video could be overkill when you're doing this kind of thing. You're, and we've talked about this before. And when I say you want people to get people to opt in without even thinking about it, that has everything to do with what your offer is. Right? It has everything to do with what that is. Your offer should be... How many of you all have heard of the blur test? So if you've heard of the blur test in copywriting. So if you've heard of the blur test, please put the number three in the question box. If you have not heard the blur test, put the number four in the question box. If you haven't heard of what the blur test is. If, if I were to take a step back and I were to look at, at, at your sales page in a blurry way, whatever stands out is pretty much what your prospect is going to remember, right? So, so whatever your and let, let's uh, let, let me try to make a little more sense out of this by showing you a sales page. What I mean, what I think, um, you, you ought to have. Okay, so let's let's go into. Okay, so here's the template, and and if you have a template that's like this, I suggest you use something like this. And what do you notice about this template right away? You notice that there's a, an autoplay video there, right? But I just said we don't want to use an autoplay video for just a, for for a page where we're trying to get people to opt in. So what would I put here in this section for the video? What would I put there? If you have any thoughts about that? I want you to j just write write your thoughts in the box. What should I put there in the place of the video? So here here's what I think. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and just grab some an image, right? Dana says an image. That's exactly right. So I'm gonna go back here. I'm just going to write it here, image. I'm going to grab an image. I think I might have one in the media library. Hopefully, I do. Uh, let's see. Let's just grab one here. All right, that's about 300. Yeah. All right. So, so in other words, I, this is about all that I want the person to see. So, what do I do when I do a blur test? If I were to just, if I would just look at this with blurry eyes, I would see a headline. I would see this image, and so that's what I would think I would be getting. Right. That's basically what I'm seeing, and that's basically what's going to stick in my brain. Uh, more than likely, these words are probably not going to stick in my brain. What's going to stick here is this big headline and this image. So you want to make sure that your page is very simple, right? And at this point, you want to make sure your opt-in is here, headline, image. That's what your sales page needs to do. So at a glance, when I come here, I should be able to get what I want. Now, another thing that, that I, I, I had not planned to mention, it's not my presentation, you want to make sure this, this page is going to be mobile optimized. 
right? It should be mobile optimized. So whatever your page builder does, make sure you get the version that does an, a, mobile, a mobile optimized site because the, the likelihood of your customers or clients and your email marketing list, they're going to want to see this on their mobile device while they're out and about. And if you don't have it there, you might miss the opportunity. Right, does everybody get that? So if you get that, please put the number five in the question box. Just the look, the, the, the look of this and making sure it's, mo it's mobile optimized. Right, making sure, again, the re really, really, really simple landing page. Right, very simple landing page. Nothing fancy here. And again, this has been said throughout the, the workshop. Try to give people an offer that they'd have to pay for. So in other words, make it, make it, make it cool. Make it, I'd say it doesn't have to be, uh, <laughs> it doesn't have to be 18 gigs of PLR. You don't have to do that. It just needs to have value, right? So, so try to give it to something, give it something that's so much value the people are, are I, they just cannot wait to get it, and they're going to give you their, ma their, their main name and email address for it. On the sales page, make sure the people know the benefits of getting your product. Okay, you're going to spell out the benefits in these sections. There shouldn't be a lot of words, but again, you want to remember, <coughs> you want to remember, that, remember the difference between features and benefits. Right, so I don't, uh, what's in the product, the fact that it's got 10 MP3s and it's got, you know, this thing, or the, uh, it's got all these components, that's not the important thing. The important thing on this page is going to be what I'm going to be like once I get done with your product. Does that make sense? Right, so if you get that, put the number six in the question box. So and what we're saying here is that you want to make sure that on this page you are stressing benefits. Don't have to be a lot of benefits, but you got to say something. And everything you say should be benefit driven. You should have you should have the balance of things so that all you have to do is say a little bit about what they're getting. People care about themselves more so they care about you and I. So we want to make this about them. Number one, and number two, we want to make sure that we're spelling out the benefits to them. If you were going to use people, and I personally, I do you see this landing page? I'm going to go back to it for a second. There's no body on this landing page, and that's really by design. Now, if you are going to have to put some people on here, then the, the, I've, I've got I've got a guy I've got a really basic guideline here. But in general, I try not to really use people in my in on, on my on my opt-in pages. It's just not important enough to have them. And they could distract people. And I don't want to distract people when they're coming to an opt-in page. And that, that's what I'm saying here. It is perfectly fine not to have anybody on your, on your landing page. You don't have to have people in there. So let's talk about the mechanics. Now, this goes without saying. But it's important to mention, I think you're, if you're watching this or you've been through the rest of the session, you probably know this, don't give the person the, uh, don't do the giveaway until they become your lead, okay? Don't uh, secure, don't give people the giveaway until they, to, to, uh, until they become your lead. So in other words, they shouldn't get access to the giveaway until that first download that you're going to send to them for the first autoresponder email, right? So in other words, they, they should go all the way through the process of double opt-in. They should put their name and email address in there. They should go to their, their, their inbox and confirm. They should click that link. It should go out to <clears throat> then send them another message. And that message should then have the giveaway. But don't do anything before then because as soon as that first message comes, you will then not necessarily be necessary if I already have the opt-in. I mean, if I already have the bribe. If I already have the bribe, I, quite frankly, I don't, I don't need you then. 
<laughs> right? So now if you want to send people to an offer, you can. I don't like sending people to offers if, if my goal is to get an opt-in. Because what happens when somebody goes, they get sent to an offer, they start looking at it, they get, they get distracted, and then they never get back around to confirming their email address, and then they just move on to something else. If your goal is to build your list, stick to that. Well, again, nothing wrong with sending people to an offer. But, but if you're going to send people to an offer, you, you have to know that when you send people to an offer, immediately when they put their name and email address in there, you are going to distract them from going to confirm their email. So again, your, your goal is not to, to start selling. There's plenty of time for that. Your goal is to get them to opt in so that you can begin to market to them. Now, I know that there are different schools of thought on this that some people feel like, well, they may not ever opt in anyway, so you might as well send them to an offer. I tend to think that you could very easily distract somebody who wants to become part of your list, who wants your giveaway, but you've already sent them to another offer. Or does that make sense? So if you get that, please put the number seven in the question box if you understand that. So yeah, understand the goal of your campaign. You can run an offer as soon after they opt in as possible. After they get that first message, you can then run an offer to them. Now, here's something that's important in terms of managing your list and generating leads. If you want to keep those leads, try not sending a broadcast email to them until they have the, until they have the offer. Please do not do that. Right? So don't, don't, don't immediately start sending, adding them to your broadcast list until you're certain that they got the freebie. I mean, there are ways to do that. There are ways to do automation inside of, uh, inside of AWeber. There are ways to do automation inside of any autoresponder. Don't broadcast until they have what you want them to have and they become part of your list. Now, in closing, I do want to say a few things now that we're, we're, we're starting to wrap this whole unit up. First, th this is not something, the buy infiltration method, you're going to do one time. Right? It's not something you're going to do, do one time. I don't care how many leads you get the first time. You need to do this over and over again. This must become part of your business. It should become a part of your practice if you want to see consistent results. If you consistently want to see people becoming part of your email marketing list, and I want to say this, you don't have to hit a home run every single time. What you do have to do is be consistent. And so this needs to become part of your practice and part of the way you're doing business. You have to keep working at this systematically. I'm going to show you how you're going to do that here in a minute. Once you finish a campaign, right? once you finish something, start again. Right? Start a new one. And I want to suggest that you use something like Trello to manage the process. I'm going to show you something here. And again, you can actually use whatever you want to manage the process. I want to show you this just so that you can see it. Maybe you already have a tool that does this. Okay, now this is an affiliate launch calendar, but the same concept is true. So in other words, you want to have, you want to have areas where you have the list of people that you're going to contact every single time. You want to put them into uh, categories of whether or not they've been approached. You want to make sure that they're confirmed. You want to make sure if you've got a follow-up. And so what you're doing on a regular basis is you are coming to look at this list and you're taking action based on what you're doing in the chart. So you go through your list and you move people from place to place. Again, based on their activity. Right? So if you get that, please put the number eight in the question box if you get that. So again, very simple, this is a very simple system that you can use and you want to do something like this because you, you don't want to uh, become overwhelmed with this process. And until you get it all down into a system, you, I promise you, you'll get overwhelmed by it. What you want to do is you want to make sure that you are managing this process and that it is systematic and that all you're doing is you're managing the columns. Right? When, you, when, you, when you look at your list and you approach somebody, you move them here. When somebody confirms that they're going to let you on their download page, you move them here. If you need to follow up with somebody, you move them here. 
if they're just if they just said no this time, you put them here, right? And then you start over when you get ready to do it again. So you're 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 tracking the progress. You're looking at it visually. You're coming in looking at this every day, and you're taking action based on what you have left to do. Now you can do this with a number of different tools. Trello is one way to do this because Trello is free, right? It is a way to be able to do it. All right. Any questions? Any questions about what we are doing? Any questions? Now I want to come back to this one. I'd say important factor. The way you're ultimately going to build your list is going to be product sales, ultimately. That's the most efficient way for you to build a list. is to create something, sell it, and then have those people add it to your email marketing list. Now, you don't have to wait until you do that. Until you do that, what you can be doing is working with partners and becoming and getting people using the buyer infiltration method. Right, you're trying to, to basically, I mean, infiltrate is a little, uh, I'd say a little uh, a pejorative, that term, but that's what you're doing. You're infiltrating a page so that you can meet buyers and help them by giving them what you have access to. Okay, well, thank you for being here and going for, through all four weeks of the lead generation workshop. Hope that this has been helpful to you. And with that, thank you very much. And I will see you in another training.